Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, if anything confuses flat earthers, it has to be star trails. And I came across a video the other day and they spent an hour and a half expressing their confusion about star trails. Now I've been meaning to have a look at star trails for a couple of months now, and this is a great opportunity to have a look at all of the problems that the flat earth has trying to understand star trails. So I'm going to spend a few episodes going over this video in detail, and we'll try and address all of them. And in the meantime, learn a little something. So let's cue up the music and get going. Well, in order to explain star trails, we have to understand how the Earth moves in relationship to the night sky. The Earth rotates about its north-south axis, which goes through the poles, and it rotates from west to east. And as a result, somebody standing on the Earth and looking towards the north will see the stars rotate in a counterclockwise fashion above them. Obviously, I've sped this up quite a bit. Now, the interesting thing is, all you have to do is turn around and look south. And I'll do that right now. Notice when we're looking south, the stars rotate in a clockwise fashion. There's no requirement to be south of the equator to see this or anything else. All you have to do is look south, and the stars will rotate in a clockwise fashion. Look north, the stars will rotate in a counterclockwise fashion. Now let's go back north again and have a look at something else. Now looking back north, what we see is the pole star, Polaris, right here. And as you can tell, that's very near the center of rotation on the north-south axis of the Earth. The actual center of rotation is called the northern celestial pole. And if we come in a little bit, you can see that that is slightly off of Polaris, about three quarters of a degree. But that is the actual center of rotation of the star fields when you're on Earth looking towards the north. Now, if we try and do this towards the south, we will not see a center of rotation. Now, as you can see very clearly, the center of rotation would be down in this area, but actually the Earth is getting in our way. This is the bulge of the Earth, and the southern celestial pole would be over the south pole. There is no pole star down there, but there's still a center of rotation if you follow that north-south axis of rotation. Now, in order to see it, we have to get rid of the Earth in between us and the southern celestial pole. And that's actually pretty easy to do. All we have to do is click off the ground. Now, as you can see here, the southern celestial pole is just like the northern celestial pole, and it's over the south pole at the other end of the north-south axis of rotation. We are looking south, as you can see, and we have a clockwise rotation. Now, if we were at the equator or south of the equator, we could see this center of rotation. But being north of the equator here in Michigan, it's hidden below the curve of the Earth. Now let's go back up to the northern hemisphere and look at the northern celestial pole again. Now the way that a star trail is formed is you point your camera on a tripod more or less towards the northern celestial pole. We'll learn later it doesn't have to be dead on the pole. But imagine that you're looking at a star, see these stars right here. Notice that they always stay the same distance from the northern celestial pole. However, they're rotating around in a circle, and they make one circular rotation every 24 hours. If we were to watch this star in a one-hour time exposure, what we would see is an arc of approximately 15 degrees, and that the radius of that arc would be the distance from the star to the northern celestial pole and the northern celestial pole would be the center of rotation. Now, just so that we can see it very clearly, let's look at these stars here. What we're going to do is we're going to point our camera north and uh, basically just open the shutter and let the stars start to trail. Watch as that occurs. You 
You see how the stars are forming an arc around a central point of rotation, which is up here in the corner? And if you were to carefully measure all of these trails you and look at the distance to the center of rotation, you'll find that they all have a certain number of degrees that they follow. The straight streaks that you see going through are either satellites or aircraft. Now, another key concept that a lot of people don't think about when they look at star trails is that the star trail is centered on not a particular star, but it's centered on the axis of rotation of the camera. Now on Earth, that is the north-south axis of rotation. However, if you're in orbit in space, say on the ISS, you can also get star trails, and we'll talk more about this later. What is the center of rotation on an orbit? Well, if you were to imagine the ISS on a string orbiting around the Earth, Whatever the center axis of that rotation is, is the center of rotation. So, this star right here is not the North Star. This star is the location of the northern end of the axis of rotation of the orbit of the ISS. Now, as a side note, I want to point out something on this photograph. Notice that these star trails are in nice, neat circles without any distortion. There's no fisheye lens effect here. If there was a fisheye lens, you would expect these circles to be distorted. You'd expect this equipment to not have straight edges on them. And there are a number of edges that would definitely show up distortion from a fisheye lens. So this is not a distorted photograph, yet there is the sodium layer of the atmosphere which is curved. And here's the surface of the Earth, which is curved. Now here's another very important point. If we were to, instead of looking in the direction of the axis of rotation of the orbit of the ISS, and simply looked ahead of the ISS in its orbit, this is what we would see. Stars would be rising from the horizon on the Earth, in the sodium layer here, and coming straight up directly in the path of our orbit. As we looked off to the side, notice that the star trails begin to curve a little bit. You can see that here, and you can see that over here. This would be the equator of our rotation, which is a point 90 degrees perpendicular to the axis of rotation. If we get closer to the ends of the axis of rotation, the star trails will begin to curve, as we saw on that first picture. This will become important later, too. Now, my final demonstration is going to be with an equatorial mount on a telescope. Let me show that to you. Here's the basic principle that we're dealing with. Now, the reason it's called an equatorial mount is that you set an edge of the telescope up to be parallel with the equator. So this angle right here, if you were to draw a line straight up through this mount, that would be in line with the north-south axis of rotation of the Earth. So if this telescope was pointing straight up in line with these forks, it would be pointing directly at the northern celestial pole, or Polaris. Now in an equatorial mount, they have a motor in this plate, and that motor rotates this plate one rotation every 24 hours. So if you're looking at an object in the sky, it will follow that object around the sky with one complete circuit every 24 hours to match the rotation of the Earth. And as a result, the star that you're looking at will remain in the center of the field of view of this telescope. Let's go ahead and see this in motion. This is an excellent animation from the European Space Agency on equatorial mounts. Okay, so here we go. Here's the equatorial mount in motion. You see how it's tracking these stars? And it does so by rotating along an axis that matches the axis of rotation of the Earth. And here you can see the celestial sphere coming into play in the North Celestial Pole. Look at it again. Tracking the stars by being in line with the rotational axis of the Earth and following the rotation of the Earth. And it keeps these stars directly in the center of the field. 
Now the concept with the ISS is very similar. Instead of being parallel to the equator, it's parallel to the orbit of the ISS. The axis of rotation of the ISS is the center of that orbit. And as a result, you get the exact same effect, except it's not the North Celestial Pole. Now that we have a little better understanding of how star trails are formed and how star trails don't necessarily have to be located over the northern or southern celestial pole, we'll go ahead and have a look at the specific claims of the Flat Earth in upcoming videos. So, until then, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by and for your support of this channel. Take care. Bye.